So last class, we spent a lot of time talking about covalent bonds. And just to remind you, a covalent bond occurs when two atoms share electrons so that each has a full valence shell. And that's a nice, stable configuration and a strong bond. And those are the bonds that make up molecules, which we're going to be talking a lot about um, in the next few classes. So in this video, I want to tell you a little bit about ionic bonds, which are kind of an extreme case of, an, of electron sharing. So in an ionic bond, electrons are actually transferred between atoms. And to give you an example, of how that works, um, I've drawn a couple of atoms that participate in ionic bonds with each other, uh, sodium and chlorine, the elements of sodium and chlorine. And if you take a look at um, the electron configurations of these two atoms, you'll notice that in the case of sodium, so it has an atomic number of 11, so um, it has a full shell 1, it has a full shell 2, and in shell 3, it has a single electron. So um, shell 3 is pretty much completely empty for sodium. Um, for chlorine, in contrast, it has a full shell 1, a full shell 2, and shell 3 has only one unpaired electron in it. And shell 3, the orbitals in shell 3 are a little more complicated than in shells 1 or 2, but there are uh, essentially four orbitals that are kind of lower energy, and so that shell is considered at a stable state when it has eight electrons. So it has seven of the eight, um, and it's just missing one. So in the case of sodium and chlorine, what happens is that, and maybe I'll get a different color for this. I have all these lovely colors here. So what happens is that this electron actually leaves sodium and jumps over here into that orbital and joins, um, and joins the chlorine, and that creates uh, a chloride ion. So this becomes a sodium ion, so the sodium gets a plus there because, because it's positively charged. Now it's lost, one, it's lost one electron relative to the number of protons it has, so it has a positive charge, and, and cl chloride, uh, chlorine becomes a negatively charged chloride ion. And the chemical terms for this is, uh, this is a cation, it's a positively charged ion, and this becomes an anion. Okay. So, um, and the reason that this occurs, this actual wholesale transfer of an electron occurs, has to do with the, dis di the difference in electronegativity between these two atoms. So the electronegativity, and I'm going to uh, represent that with an uppercase E, the uh, electronegativity of sodium is 0 0.9, which is really quite low. When we talked about electronegativities in class, we gave examples of hydrogen and carbon having fairly low electronegativities, and they were a little over 2. Um, so this is quite a bit lower. And in contrast, the electronegativity of the chlorine is um, equal to 3, so it's quite a bit higher. So we use the analogy of, you know, two dogs pulling on a rope, and this would kind of be like a contest between a, um, a Tibetan mastiff and a squirrel. So the, cl the chlorine wins, and it pulls the electron right off of the, of the sodium. So now that these are, um, these are charged ions, they have a very strong attraction to each other. And so the ionic bond occurs... So an ionic bond is actually an electrical attraction between two oppositely charged ions. And that attraction is really quite strong. Um, they're very strongly attracted to each other with those, with those negative charges. And when they are, um, when they are uh, associated with each other, it forms something called a salt. So it forms a salt. And of course, you are well familiar with the example of sodium chloride. That's table salt. It's delicious. We shake it on our food, although not too much. Um, but it's, so it's a strong attraction, but it's very easily dissolved. If you put salt in water, the, those ions will dissociate from each other. And that has to do with the polar nature of water. It kind of breaks up and, and um, uh, uh, weakens those um, uh, electrical attractions. Okay. So the final point that I want to make about all this is that you can think about the way that electrons share, excuse me, the way that atoms share electrons with each other along something that your book calls the electron sharing continuum, which sounds 
really very grand indeed. And I'm not sure I can fit it in the screen here. Continuum. Also not sure I can spell it. Continuum. There we go. The electron sharing continuum. So you can think about bonds ranging from a situation where two atoms have equal sharing of electrons equal sharing of E's, I'll just make it as a little E minus, to unequal sharing, sharing of E, of E's, um, all the way to transfer of E's. Okay, so the example, um, example where a bond, a bond where electrons are equally shared is a nonpolar covalent bond. Bond. Um, where electrons are being shared, but they're being shared unequally, we call that a polar covalent bond. Notice that in both cases where you have electron sharing, it's a covalent bond. That's the definition of a covalent bond, and remember that covalent bonds are how we build molecules. And then in the case of transfer of electrons, then that occurs when we have an ionic bond. And then some examples uh, really quick of, um, you know, this type of bond. So um, nonpolar covalent bonds we might see in a molecule of methane where we have uh, bonds between carbons and hydrogens. They have very similar electronegativities, so they share their electrons quite equally. So there isn't, um, there's no real charge or even partial charge associated with any of the atoms in this molecule. In the uh, examples of polar covalent bonds would be in the case of a molecule of water. So um, oxygen has a much higher electronegativity than hydrogen, it tends to pull electrons towards it, and that gives it a partial negative charge that we show with a delta minus, and then those uh, uh, hydrogens get a partial positive charge, like that. So in a, when you have polar covalent bonds, you wind up with a molecule that has regions of partial charge, and then in the case of an ionic bond, like um, sodium and chloride, like sodium chloride, you actually have um, fully charged atoms bearing a full charge that are attracted to each other um, because of their opposite charges.